and welcome to Yarn Lane on Monday morning. Oh, it's going to be a good one today because A, it's crochet and B, it's Carol. And the two go together very, very well. So you will have seen Carol on um, Yarn Lane before because she is an absolute expert knitting and crochet and all other things yarn. So she has demonstrated um, West Yorkshire spinners. She's demonstrated cave rowing. She's but today she is on with Cool Designs, which is her very own company, where she has created kits for you. So she's created kits for crochets by a crochet. So you know that what are in these kits is exactly what you need. And what's brilliant about them is that everything you need is in them. And there's lots of little bits and pieces. So let's start off. We're going to run through the kits and then we'll meet Carol and go through the demonstration. So the first design is this one. Is that not just beautiful? And um, as I said to you before, it does come with everything you need. So the handles, comes with the wooden handles, comes with all the yarn you need to make the bag. The bag is fully lined, as you can see. And it has, um, I'll show you in a minute in the kit, like a plastic canvas inside that gives it its structure. Now you can have it just, oh, also it has a little magnetic clasp to hold it together. Now you can use it just as a little bag to hold like this, but if you want to have it as a shoulder bag, comes with a special strap as well. Optional, you can put it in. You can not have it, you can keep it inside, but then you can hang it on your shoulder. Extremely stylish though, isn't it? I love this one. So this one is the golden brown ombre and it is fully lined. So let me show you the kit because then you'll be able to see what you get in it. But that is extremely stylish. If you have a look on sites like Not On The High Street and Etsy or online, these are incredibly expensive. They are designer handbags. Summer holiday. They are, but that is a real designer handbag, particularly with the wooden handles. So let me show you what you get in the kit. Kits all come beautifully packaged. So you get, let's start with the, um, the wooden handles, a pair of, that fit, obviously have been made exactly to fit these bags. Um, you get a little bag that's got stitch markers and the magnetic clasp, because Carol has thought of everything that you need, so you don't have to go and find anything yourself. You get the plastic canvas that's used to stiffen the bag, um, the lining fabric, cotton lining fabric, that's nice, isn't it? And all the yarn you need. Look at these baby balls. So some of the kits, you have all the same colour. Some kits you might just have a bigger ball that's, that's Carol's wound down. But it is exactly these colours. It's a beautiful um, cotton yarn. So you haven't got to worry about how you're going to create. Because actually when you, you'll see when um, Carol um, demonstrates, it looks like that you've got eight different colours in here. But it's the way that they're all so combined. Well, it looks more than eight, doesn't it? But the way that they're all combined together makes it really, really ombre. But you've got all the yarn you need and obviously all of the instructions are in there too. The only thing that you haven't got is the crochet hook because we know that a lot of you already have your own crochet hooks. But if you do need a crochet hook, then you can buy that separately. It's a three and a half mil hook and that's on the website if you scroll down below if you don't have one already. But we didn't put it in because I know a lot of you already have it. So that is the golden ombre. Now, if you're more of a blue person, because we know you love blue, so obviously we have given you blue too. So in the blue bag, you get obviously the wooden handles, the lining fabric, that looks like a piece, bit of batik, is that a bit of batik? It's really lovely, isn't it? It goes well with that. You get the uh, magnetic class and stitch markers in a matching blue bag that you can keep afterwards in your bag. <laughs> and then all of these beautiful, I love these colours. Yeah. Really, I love that. Well, you've got like a midnight blue. This is beautiful teal, isn't it? Like Kingfisher. Gorgeous, yeah. Gorgeous colours. Yeah. So imagine that in all of the shades of ombre. Um, Carol's going to be demonstrating this so you can see what it looks like. And obviously the plastic canvas and full instructions. So that's the blue one. You've just got to decide which colourway you like, which actually is a struggle. Because I don't know really. Don't know which one I like the best. Right, bag number two. Is this the triangle bag? Look at that. That is extremely stylish, isn't it? That is very designer. So it's just a clutch bag, but it's beautiful, isn't it? It's fully lined, 
So you've got the wooden handles again that fit exactly the design because the design has been designed around the handles and the handles have been designed around the design. <laughs> That's how really copied it is, isn't it? The two have been designed around each other. Yeah. Carol will explain later. <laughs> if I'm making no sense. But that is very sad. Again, you know, if you saw this in a boutique, can you imagine how much that would cost? And you have got everything in your kit to make this. It's very stylish. And it's lovely, isn't it, to see, you know, that where you've got really traditional crafts like crochet and knitting being used in something a little, you know, a bit more modern or something that you actually really want to wear and something that looks like you've gone and bought it from a designer shop, but you haven't, you've made it yourself. Anyway, that's, let me show you the kit for this one. So this is the grey and white triangle bag. And in this kit, you get the triangle handles. Look, they've got all the holes in them already, so you haven't got to worry about that. Aren't they beautiful? Extremely soft. What wood is this? Oh, I'd have to ask his lordship. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually know what the wood is. It's very but, uh, smooth. Yeah, he's very good at it and sands and... It's lovely. So completely. Carol's husband makes these handles. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they are so smooth. Yeah. Nice. Um, so you've got the handles, you've got the lining, cotton lining, and then you've got the cotton yarn to make the bag, the grey and the white. So you've got 100 grams of each, and obviously all the instructions that you need are in there. So that's the grey and white one. And we also have another colourway for you. So we know how you like a little choice. Don't we all? This one is teal and cream. So again, you've got the triangular handles with all the holes. You can't get these anywhere else. These are completely exclusive to Carol. No one else does them. Um, lovely teal lining for it. And then you've got a 100 gram ball of teal cotton yarn and 100 gram of cream. Beautiful, aren't they? Right. So when everyone has checked out of these, there are only single figures left. So if you do want these beautiful kits, you need to check out now. Um, also, obviously, the crochet hook that you will need is on there. And just one thing, can I say that we've got the wool needles back in stock. These have been out of stock for ages and ages. And these are the best needles for sewing together because they have a large loop on the top that you can easily get your yarn into. So if you want to sew together, whether it's knitting or crochet or anything, they come in three different widths so depending on the um the thickness you're doing but they have these lovely big loops on the top so you haven't got to thread your yarn through an eye They're only 199 but we're constantly out of stock of them so if you want them i would pop those in your basket now right that's the kits done welcome carol hello hello tell me about nice the tell me back. about the kits first the sort of development of where you started okay well i i just i had the ideas i love these little balls i they're so that's, gorgeous that's definitely started off okay one. And so how that works is you have you have darker up to lighter and you use two two strands together oh, all the way up. So that's how you so blend to create the different colours, yeah. Because it does blend yeah, beautifully, it does, doesn't yeah. it? So that's what I did with that. And then I thought in yeah. fact it was um, my partner who said, I think wooden wooden handles would look really good with those, wouldn't they? I said, Oh yeah, well you've got this snazzy machine thing and you can design things. Could you make me some? He said, Yeah, do me a sketch. Wow. So there we go. And I'm amazed because these have got like little grooves in as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So, and then I said, well, I'd really like to make <laughs> this triangle idea that I've got in my head. Could you do those? Mm, yeah, probably. Give us a sketch and, and there and we go. So I've been in this lovely position that I can mm. have him design anything. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> these are 100% exclusive <laughs> to you. Yeah. Can't get them anywhere I just, else. I just, I, I love wooden wooden handles like that. It does, it really gives it quality and sophistication yeah. though, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I, I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think they're great. Mm. They just feel, they feel really nice to hold. And I think with this one, because you've got the stiffness in it yeah. as well. It's yeah, just so that's more of a, I've, I've used that bag lots of times. I use, well, when we could go out, mm. I used to, <laughs> I used to it is, it use it. It is a going it. out evening yeah, bag, isn't it? Yeah, I used to use that one quite a lot. Um, the other one I'm looking forward to using more like a sort of a summery type yeah, that's you like know. your sort of little clutch, yeah, your little but with clutch. an actual handle, so you haven't yeah. got to hold the thing. Yeah. And you can put a long ha longer handle oh, on that one oh, as well if you wanted this. to. Like oh, yeah, so it could be a shoulder decided. bag if you yeah. wanted it to be. The instructions include how to do that. If oh, you okay. To, so. But, uh, right, so which okay. one are we going to start with? Right, we, if we start with the ombre one, okay. and the, to be honest, they're both very, very straightforward. 
In fact, you'll be surprised how straightforward yeah, the triangle they actually, one is in a minute. They, well, yeah, they look complicated, which they is do. always good, isn't but it? But it's because you're combining the colours on the ombre. So what I've done here, this is like, um, I just used two I just picked two colours and happened to be the two blues. This is like what your base would look like, but a smaller version. So oh, okay. the base is actually done in two of the, the main colour, the darkest colour. Right. Um, but I have to use two different ones just to confuse everyone. <laughs> okay. Um, and then, so, yes, yeah, so the base is done in just one colour, which is the darker one. And that is just one. straightforward rows of double crochet. So there's nothing tricky about that at all. Um, in fact, there's nothing tricky about any of this. But I just wanted to show you probably the bit that people might um, find a bit fiddly is the pick you pick up around the base and then carry on in spirals all the way to oh, the Oh, so top. you make a rectangle and then yep. you work, you work, work around, around it. it. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to, how to uh, pick, up. pick up around the round the rectangle. So this is a smaller, <laughs> tiny little bag. This is going to be a doll's <laughs> bag. So Yours will be bigger I than I will this. start halfway down one side where the row ends are. So I'm gonna, that's where I like to start, in the middle. So that's where any sort of... It's not really a seam, but that's where the joins go. Well, any be. sort of looseness or, yeah. I mean, you can't see yours, but I know if it was mine. Well, when you just change colours, you might see it slightly up. Oh, the OK. Side. Can you see? Yes. But okay. it's the, not that The noticeable. slight step, but I better than in the middle. Yeah, absolutely. So that's why I start here. So what I've got here is two yarns held together. Again, just to confuse you, these are two yarns the same colour, <laughs> but they would be different. But, uh, Whatever, the two yarns. <laughs> okay, and that's how you get this shaded effect. Yes, yes. So but it's all in the instructions, so don't worry, I'm going to remember that. Absolutely. So I'm just pulling that through. And pictures. Yeah, yeah, to make a stitch. Oh, yeah, I like to have photos in so everybody can, just in case they don't understand what I'm trying to say. Well, a picture says a thousand words, yes. doesn't it? Yes, So Please do. I've just joined with a slip stitch there. So to work up the sides, I'm just doing... Um, two double crochets through the row ends and just find a suitable oh i've gone too far there i think i should have done the first one where i started find a suitable hole and you will be doing four along here to the top and i'm only doing two because i've got a smaller sample so it's you so the whole design is work with the two strands of yarn. two strands completely yeah and then to pick up along the edge to make this sort of fold at the bottom of the bag you pick up into the stitches, but just into the back loop. Ah, okay. So, so that's that for the front and back. So for the yeah. side ones, you just go into them. Side, you just go into them to start with. Oh, and that then makes a nice little ridge, like a corner, doesn't it? And then you, you add the ridge on the sides on the next row, if you like. So here I am. I'm just going through. If you can see the back loop there. Yeah. So here's the two loops. Just go through that. And that leads, leaves the nice... Um, strand across at the front which will form your shaping when the rest of the bag forms so that will be your turning thing so all the way along in each stitch um, I think there's 30 37 in the bag but I've only got 15 here so see I know all my numbers no, no, <laughs> I'm impressed. isn't that sad you've obviously done it too many, <laughs> too many times that you've remembered that in, in well I want to make some other colors as well but I am struggling to get this yarn so it's a bit of a shame but anyway never mind we won't worry about that <laughs> no, well we have to make some more colors I know it's always the way isn't it it's the one that you yeah. want to use okay so I've got to the end of that row now I'm going to go down the side um, to pick up the sides and I've got to pick up four you will be picking up eight so let me find four holes. One, two, three, four. That looks reasonable. And don't forget that eventually this will turn into the bottom of the bag and, and sort of carry on at the back there. So first it looks flat, but it will, it will work itself out as you do a few more rows. So yeah, this goes through the holes in the row ends. Then when we get to the bottom, we've got to pick up I've said in the back loops of the chains, if you're not really sure, you just want to leave a loop at the front, just like you did on the top, so that it yeah, shows the sides. That. So there we go. That's what I would call yeah, the, back the back loop of the chain. Yeah, back loop of the chain. So there's the next one. It's a really nice technique, that though, isn't it? Because yeah. whether you work into the front or back or through both, yep. you get quite a different effect. Yeah, it's lovely. I, and people use it a lot on... Um, when they're working crochet ribbing along the bottom, they sort of use it sideways, yeah. 
with front and backs, so uh, it creates a sort of a ribbed effect. Or just a, like a little ridge. Yeah. It's used quite a lot in things like amigurumi, mm -hmm. I can never say that. Um, amigurumi. <laughs> and all those sorts of things, like just like you say, to create a little ridge. So I'm going in all the back chains here, and then... Also, I think it also makes it easier then when you're counting because you have to, you know, because you've got to look at where is the front, where exactly, is the back. Exactly, yeah. You're not just sort of randomly crocheting. It, and it's just such an easy way to create a fold, you know. Um, crochet is very versatile with that sort of thing, um, more than more than knitting, yes. I, I would say. But uh, but I love both anyway. So here we are. We've got to the end there. Now I've just got to pick up two more. Uh, one, two. I'm going to go in. There, just hide that end underneath while I'm doing. And, and also, when you're doing yours, you will be using different colours, so it, it is easier to see yeah. as well. Just going to take this stitch marker out. I put that into myself to remind me where to start because <laughs> I didn't want to start on the bottom chain bit first. And then I'm just going to pull through with a slip stitch. So there's the first sort of row, and you see it's already starting to bend up. Now, mm. on your second row is now where you can go through the back loop on the side bits. Because now you've got stitches in the, in the row ends there. Right. So I go through the back loop now of these first two. This is all in the pattern. Um, but on the front, I, go, I now start going through the full. Oh, so you just do the back loops on the sides to yeah, get the little... just to get the little... The little so bottom. It will be slightly higher than the other one, but um, that, that really doesn't make a huge amount of difference yeah but it does put a nice edge to it so let's just show you that so yeah so now you've got you can see slightly on those first mm. two stitches there you've got the edge developing um, and then if you carry on round you you do the same thing on the other side so through each stitch here let's just have a quick go and see what happens on the other side and now side. we're going through both loops as now per we're going normal. through both loops and then after you finish the whole of this round you'd just be going on and on and on through both loops all the time, just yeah. changing colours as you go. And you work it in a spiral from now on. You don't, you don't finish each round after we've got this first bit sorted out. So you just keep going, really. And it's nice because you're working with the two strands as well. It makes it a bit chunkier, so it's easier to count. Yes, yes, it's, it is it's very really easy. And, uh, so it's almost like, is that like using a chunky yarn? Well, it is. Is this the, double knit? It's, uh, I think it's, it's four ply, I think. Oh, this. OK. That's what they say. But, you know, these things always vary slightly anyway. I well, think, that's true, isn't it? I, I and now you get four pine sport weight. Oh. Yep, that's right. And now I've come to the other side. So I've got four stitches here that I made last time, and I'm just going to go through the backs of those to create yes. a little bit. So is two four plies a double knit? Because it's four straps. Well, yes, people say it is, but it mm. is. It is, really. If you look at that, that's... But I'm using a slightly smaller hook than you would use on a double knit. And again, that's because I do that on bags deliberately so that they're nice and firm. Well, it gives it a lovely texture, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. So now back through the other side, just through both I think all loops. the fat is cotton as well, gives it a nice texture. Oh gosh, yes, that's great for bags. So if I can show you now, so we've got loops along the yeah. bottom here. And in yours, they would be either both dark brown or both the really dark blue. Because mm -hmm. the bottom... Yes, because that's the base. Yeah. And then along the sides there, that will be in the two, the ne the dark blue and the next blue colour. Oh, so that yeah, yeah. so the sides of that colour. Yeah. So they won't be quite as one, obvious as mine are here. It would be like that. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, as you go up. And yeah, I tell you what, nice. I love I love the next blue as well. That really yeah, it'd be vivid nice to one. see how they combine. Yeah, nice, aren't they? They're lovely. Because they are very close as well, aren't they? So each one. It's well, that's the whole thing about this company. Um, they have they have. 90 odd, about 98 oh, okay. shades, I think. Yeah. So some of them are really, really close. Um, so sometimes it's so hard to choose. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? I know. <laughs> but then you get, you've got a really lovely colour palette there. I yes, imagine it looks absolutely. very like, like the sea. Absolutely, yeah, beautiful. I do want to make a full blue one. I haven't got round to that yet. <laughs> yeah. hey, that's Just a bit busy day. with other things. Yes. So there we are. That's the only bit in it that, you know, 
you might need a bit of explaining just the, on it the getting on. and then other than that then what, what then happens the handle, when you get to the handle when you get to the handle you're not working round anymore you're working across now the reason i've put four stitch markers in is because i want you to count from the center out place those stitch you markers okay so from here where the edge of that should go so that you get it nice and central mm. because that is what goes through the obviously so you join this the onto bag. the top when you finish yeah you just pick up along those stitches and go all the way along between there. the stitch markers and do a few rows in um, double crochet now I th that's just one one yarn i think i can't remember now yes it that's is just one yarn it is just one color time to, to fit it through that's yeah right. no it is yeah. i think yeah it is yeah, only one and then you have one. to do it for the right length so that it will you do it for the length so that it goes round there and you can you can just whip stitch it together but don't do what i did and forget to put the uh, magnetic class <laughs> that's in exactly first. what i would do <laughs> <laughs> that's what i did and i had to unpick it all <laughs> oh no i'd forget to put the handle on i'd be like oh i've done that quickly sew it down <laughs> oh well where's the handle Okay, so, um, <laughs> but before you put the handles on, you need to sort out the uh, lining if you want to ah, use it. Ah, okay. Because it will be hard to put that in afterwards, so. Yes, I suppose, and then the, the plastic canvas, you the cut canvas, down to size and yeah. that fits between the two. Yeah. You can turn the bag inside out to put the canvas on, and that's what I did. And the photos are in there for They're that. They're all in there, all in it, there. Uh, it Everything you need to know. to turn it back the right way, but, but it's not going to Everything you need to know, it's all in yeah. here, and I think it's nice that you've you know, you've really focused in on the construction, which is yeah. really important. Yeah. Well, isn't after it? forgetting to put that on. Yeah. Thought, mm, <laughs> That's exactly okay. what I would do. <laughs> it's a bit like I never, ever leave a turning gap when I say, leave a two inch turning gap and turn right sides out. <laughs> oh, I kept going. Missed. <laughs> well done, pick it. So now I was always saying, oh, put the pins so you remember. Goodness. So Lovely. Yeah, so that's that one. It's very, very straightforward. Very straightforward. Okay, so and the next one? And then the, the triangle bag, oh, so the that's your bag. ombre bag. Should we just go through the kits again? Yes. Right, so just to let you know, the teal and the cream and the triangle bag are in single figures. I just want to run over the kits we've just done before we move on to yeah. the next one. The golden ombre, which is the one that I am holding, this one here, that has got in it... Um, the handles, all the yarn, all the cotton yarn that you need to create the ombre effect, the lining fabric, the plastic canvas, you've got two wooden handles, handmade by Carol's husband, <laughs> kindly, he's so pleased, and um, stitch markers and the magnetic glass and all the instructions. So the only thing you don't have in the kit is the crochet hook, which we do have online, or you've got your own. So everything you need, all the, which is lovely, because sometimes with these kits, you know, you said, oh, you need some lining fabric, you can't find the right one, or you need the magnetic class, you've then got to pay extra postage to buy it from somewhere else. So everything is a complete kit, which is a joy. <laughs> I love a complete kit. Otherwise, you have to go to five different websites yeah. and pay five lots of postage, postage yeah. but it's all in there. <laughs> The blue one is the most popular. Not surprisingly, because we love blue, we love blue. But then I love that golden one too. Mm. So in the blue one, obviously you've got the wooden handles, a pair. You've got all the cotton yarns that you need to create the bag. Um, full instructions, the plastic canvas, a blue bag with the magnetic clasp and the stitch holders and the lining fabric. So that's everything you need in the kit. Right. Let's move on to triangles. Right. So where do we start with the triangle? triangles? Okay. So what I want to do first is show you the stitch pattern because it's uh, it's very simple, but it's quite effective. It looks sort of, um, I don't know, brick we woven. It's, even? Yeah, it is. Sort of it's very of. woven. It's hard yeah. to, and it's hard to see as well which way you've done it. Yeah. So I'll show you the stitch first and then I'll show you how it's constructed. Because it is like ingenious. It's really, <laughs> yeah, I don't know which, which is the row. No. <laughs> we'll look at that later. So let's just show you the stitch pattern first. And it has a, uh, in the book, there's instructions and a diagram. But basically, once you get going, it's the same row repeated lots and lots. So I'm just going to do a small sample um, to show you. Uh, I've just done a slip stitch there. I'm just going to do 12 chains. Now, the, only, the one thing about this chain is it needs to be done tight because this is quite a dense stitch and it will pull in. So when you do yours, you're holding your yarn quite differently. 
I always ask everyone, how do you do it? Because everyone does it differently mm -hmm. and there's not a right or a wrong. And it's really interesting because we have a lot of people on our um, fan page who say, how do we start? So how do you hold yours just like I between just two hold, fingers? Just like that, yeah. Wow. I do, later on, in, when I get going in crochet, I tend to sort of hold it and tension it and hold it differently. But the beginning, I just do the, I just do it like that. So I've got my chain being held in my fingers Right, here, and then the, the yarn is and just... And the yarn between. Okay, so you haven't got just, it round, round fingers. Just keep hooking. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think for beginners, and it, if you haven't got a way, then it's nice to sort of work out which way Absolutely, works for you. yeah. Yep. And with your hook, you hold it like a pencil. Yeah, I yes, do, actually. Yeah. No, I hold mine like that. Isn't that funny? But other people hold it like I'll tell you what like else, I've been doing a lot of knitting the last few last week, and this felt really weird, picking this <laughs> up again. <Yeah. laughs> so I've done 12 chain. You will do 40-odd. I can't remember the exact number. Um, but they do need to be tight um, because as you start working this stitch, it's quite dense. And if you find the bottom the beginning is flaring out a bit, then maybe try it again with either a smaller needle or, you know, or tighter. Right. Okay. So whereabouts on the bag do you start? Is it starting? I'm going to tell you that. Oh, right. Sorry, surprise. surprise. Tell Ruining the surprise. <laughs> just do some chains. <laughs> so 12 chains. So I'm just going to go into the second chain from the hook now and do a, let's put this pattern in front of me. Do, oh, that's showing you the, the bit I want to keep yeah. secret. Doing a double crochet. <laughs> in there so just pull it through yarn round and through the two now you do one chain there and then oh, this a diagram. stitch and double chain into the next chain from the beginning so all the way along now you're going to be doing chain one skip one stitch and double crochet in the next stitch actually i'll move this out of the way because I think it'll be clearer to see on the wood. There we go. So chain one. So you've put a chart in for this and... And the written. And the yeah. written. Skip one stitch and double crochet. Yeah, I always like to do both. Some people like one, some people like the other. So I'm happy to provide both. So chain one, skip one stitch, double crochet, and do this all the way to the end, quite straightforward. Chain one, skip one stitch, double crochet. There we go. Now, the next row is the same row all the way throughout the rest of the, of the making now. Um, you're basically going to make a big rectangle. Okay. And then I'm going to show you how to turn that into that So it's shape. a chain and a double crochet and a chain? Chain and a double crochet, okay. chain, all the way along. And now on the next row, you, do, you work your double crochets into the chain from the previous row. So okay. it's chain one. Which, which is good with the chart, actually. Yeah, it, you can see it clearer on the chart, I think. So with the chart then, uh, what uh, what would you say to people if they hadn't, don't use either or didn't know what what to do? Is it best to follow the words? Is it follow the chart? I would say both, to be honest, because if you're learning charting, um, by the way, the chart starts there. I thought I'd put that, but never mind. So You have on here. Oh, have I? Yeah. Oh, okay, it's my, my copy. That's yeah, good then. It does say start so, here. So you come along here with your chains and then chain into there, uh, sorry, double crochet into there, skip one, chain one, double crochet. So this is the first row back mm. and this is the second row. And then that second row gets repeated. Now, if you're learning charts or you're learning, Word. or you like charts and you're learning the words, look at them together because then that's going to help you. Oh yeah, that's what that means. You know, whichever one is most familiar with you, uh, to you, I would say, look at, look at the other one as is well. Is it easier to follow, do you think, if I you've got think a chart? charts are easier, yeah. Personally, I, yeah, because I tell you what, you know, I, I check patterns and things like mm. that as a living. If, if someone gives me a, a crochet pattern and I'm, and I'm tech editing it, I would, I'd draw the chart. I can't oh, do it without okay. the chart. So yeah, but then that's quite a good way of checking it, isn't it? It is, because actually. That is out, the check. If yes. they've missed out a, a half treble, you do know. Yeah, you see, you wouldn't spot that on the words necessarily no. but you would it, it would it would jump out at you on also you'd know if it didn't add up yes yes that's true yes so. i think i follow words and not charts do you yes and i think that's it? because most stuff i do doesn't have a chart yeah because most patterns don't do they um i think no i think most not. or you get ones that only have a chart nothing else 
Oh yeah. No, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. <laughs> Sorry. You won't you won't get that from me. Don't you need worry. words as well. But you, you well, you sometimes see patterns where it's just a chart. Yes. But actually when you look at it now that actually makes sense and I think I think it's easier to follow a chart. Yeah. But I think it's just your brain, isn't yeah. it? I look at that and go, Oh, I don't know what that means. So there's my first little row. You can't really see much, but I've worked the, the double crochets into the chain holes. Getting, now if I just do one more. Do you want to show it? Because we've been getting close now. If you want to lay it flat to have a look at. There you go. There you go. She's zooming in. So see the little holes? That's where the double crochets have been worked. Now going back this way, they're going to be in the chains that we've made here. So they're going to be slightly offset. And you can see oh, on the okay, chart like that's bricks. how they work. Yeah. So let me do one more row because then it will become clearer. So I've done my beginning chain. Just if you can't find between the double crochets, pull it apart a bit and you'll soon see a double crochet has a, a V. See that V there? Yeah. So you've got to, there's the first V, there's the second V. You've got to go in this space here, which is actually a chain space. So just pull it apart a bit. And there we go. So double crochet in there, chain and skip that double crochet, double crochet in there, in the chain space. Okay. Chain I'm this gets easier as well. You yeah, now there. you can see a bit clearer now. It's tricky on the first row. I was, I was said to somebody once with crochet, the problem is, it's the hardest bit is the beginning. Yes. And that's the bit where you're learning it. Yeah. It's almost as if you could start it halfway through yes. and then go back to the beginning. I often think that as well when I'm teaching people to start and thinking, oh my God, this bit is the they don't like yeah. this bit because this bit's that know, is the hardest it's not the fun bit. and even um a starting chain holding onto it is hard yes. isn't it but then you, you get need then to you practice that so there we go there's the second row and it's see the sort of offset now yeah, no, of that's these lovely. little trebles be aware though that you need to work into the last chain each time so coming back this way we worked into this chain if we were going back along there we work into that chain. oh okay otherwise you'll lose some stitches but it's basically the same row repeated. I suppose working from a chart as well, it's easy for counting yourself. Yes. Because otherwise, yes, if you're doing like, so. you can see what you're supposed to be going into. Yes, exactly. And now, and, and obviously the final thing looks like the chart. That's the whole point. Yes. You know, it's, it's a visual representation. Because I think the biggest problem with crochet item. is once you've learned the sort of the basic chain stitch and the stuff is the following a pattern and not ending up with more or less stitches that is really that is the trickiest bit with crochet particularly um, so yeah if you follow the chart and see where the always take note of where the start and the end bits are you know because it's so easy to skip a stitch at the end um, you know and then you're and then yeah your well no I, I mean I've been down. crocheting for a while not as long as I've been knitting but I still end up with I was doing a daffodil last night well I had 18 stitches instead of nine how did that happen <laughs> Did you have the gin out at the I time? I don't know, I just, done I just undid it all and started it again. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I'm not sure I was actually following the pattern very well either. No. However, uh, I'd missed the that. bit that you, I was on the wrong row. But okay. it does, it, I think that honestly is the hardest bit, is yes, the counting, it is. isn't it? it? Is. And so be really careful on the first few rows. And if, if, you, if you see your, see this little bit's a lovely little rectangle, but mm. if you start if to you see it going off triangle. that way or that way, then you've obviously missed a stitch yes. or added a stitch somewhere. So. <laughs> but, follow, so it's a good, it's so good chart, practice. I, I like that chart, yeah. yeah I'm, yeah. I'm going to start doing that. Yeah. A lot and of patterns I love don't that have them, pattern. I love that pattern on the, the weave, this sort of weave woven pattern. Okay, so all you do, I've got a little bit of origami here. You didn't, <laughs> oh. Make it from paper. Now you're going to be learning that today. If you don't want to do the crochet. <laughs> this is what you're going to make for your bag. You're going to make a complete square. You're starting here and you're going that way. So that one is white. That's if your we're white. Doing this one. Yep. And then you carry on with the grey for twice the length. Okay. So you've got a square there and you've got a rectangle there. And you there. just keep going. It's not joined and together or anything. No, it's you just keep going. Right. Right. Um, but the important thing is, if you follow the pattern and you get the same tension as me, then you should have an exact square if you followed the number of rows. Mm. If you find you haven't got an exact square, then you, you can add or take off a row. 
Okay, but it's important that you have an exact So at that square. stage, once you get to the end of the white or the cream, yeah. you need to measure it then? Well, this is what I would do. In fact, I think I've got a photo. Fold it over, corner to corner. And this is how it, what I did as I made it. Corner to corner there and make sure it, it, it meets, mm. you know, in, and forms a, a triangle with all the sides matching up. Okay. okay. So if you've got to that, if you think you've got a square, you can measure it, obviously, or you could just fold it over and make sure it makes a complete triangle with no extra bits, you know, and no, then no bits like that. Then you can instance. start the other colour. And then you turn start the other colour, yeah. So if it isn't, you just add another row yeah. or take one off? Yeah, or? it's no problem at all. It oh, won't okay. affect the final. So it's not so. going to be a massive difference? No, it shouldn't be a massive difference. So, and then you just keep going and you do the same thing. Here. Well, you know by the number of rows you've done here that you need to do twice as many here now. Yes. Okay. And, and you can count square. them. Actually, they're not too bad to count, are no, they? No, they are quite easy to count, really. Yeah. I and like then, the way that it joins the colour. Yeah, it's nice, isn't, isn't it? it? I, I actually do think that's quite a nice feature. Yeah, no, but it looks <laughs> well, when I first saw it, I thought you'd sewn these together. No, well, one place I will have done and one I won't have done. So let's look at how that all okay. comes together. Okay, but it looks... But it looks the same because I, um, I make it look the same. You know, I sort of, toward, at the end, when I'm doing, when I'm joining a white to mm. a grey bit, because you do have to join a white to a grey bit at one point, um, I'll do a row of the... the greys along the edge of the white first and then join oh, sew them okay. together so it looks exactly the same. Yeah but it's nice, it's a yeah. nice feature isn't it? It is nice. So do you want to know how to make the triangle? I oh, absolutely do, yeah. So I've got, I've got one square. Some of you have probably seen this already because it is... two other squares. It is on, on a few sites out there how to make a bag like this. So there we go. We fold that into the triangle first, top down. And then we go over to this triangle, this square here, and do the opposite, bottom up. So that's what it should look like at that point. Okay, and there's all pictures of this, there's isn't there? I've got to remember this. Pictures everywhere, yeah. Right. I didn't bring my ruler, but... There's a tape measure behind you, if that's any no, help. No, it's all right. What we're now going to do is we're going to um, fold... Do you need a... One of the, you can use one of the rotary cutting rulers. Or a tape measure. I just need a straight line. Well, behind you, what, hanging you up on the um, things, the rotary cutting. Oh rings. yes, 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 yes. You just Ooh. have to sort of angle it upwards, and it will come. Ooh. Yeah, you need to sort of angle, bend Let it upwards at like one. right angles. There we go. That's better. <laughs> That's better. Right. So now, a little bit of fold in the opposite way now, corner to corner that way. Yeah. That's what we're going to fold. So I will just make a little line. Like that, thank you for that. <laughs> and then the whole thing folds up like that. It's crochet origami, this. It's great, isn't it? But at this point, you've done all the crocheting, so this is the construction section. Yeah, so now you, you, you can whip stitch two grey or whichever colour you, you're so working on that together. So that's that bit there. that's that bit there. Turn over, and now you, this is where you've got to join the light to the dark colour. And in the in the example, so I now know which side this is that you've yeah. sewn now. So that's the sewn sign. And in the example, I've shown you how to on the white. Let's assume this is the white. Work a row of grey stitches in the same way as the pattern was. Ah, uh, okay. And so then that it yeah, because it just is whip stitch grey to grey. Yeah. So you're you're double crocheting. One chain, miss one stitch yeah. along there. Yeah. Oh, so you don't sew this then? You actually... I do sew after that, but I just wanted to put a row of grey on the top of the white. Okay. So that it would match the other side. Because if you just whip stitch the white and the grey together, it won't be quite the same. So... No, yeah, I see what you that mean. that makes sense? Yes, yeah. yeah. So you have to work another row on top. Just one small one, that's all. So then you've got your basic shape there. Yeah. Dun, 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 and dun, you sew it all together. And then... You've got these points up here. Oh, yes. So Which you what can't we really then cut do... off, can you? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well I can. Well, if it was fabric, <laughs> it'd be fine, wouldn't it? But this is crochet. So I then it, you then pop your triangle um, shape in here, and let's assume it comes up to about here. And it should all fit, because this should be 90 degrees, and all this mathematical stuff And you've worked all that out. Fine. Yeah, so just And how do you do then... That. And do you sew the handle in at this point? 
Um, what did I do first? No, I'll tell you what I did first. In fact, before I did any of this, I attached a lining to that piece as it is. Oh, the whole so thing? Haven't, yeah, so you haven't got to go back in to do the lining. Okay, and so. that's just sewn in by hand? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not really a sewer. I shouldn't say that on Sewing Street, but I'm not really. So, uh, yeah, no, you are not on Sewing Street, you're on line, <laughs> your lane. If I said to everyone on Sewing Street, you're a knitter, they'd go, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> so, no, to be fair, some of them are, but most of them wouldn't be, so you don't have... But it's yeah. just hand slip stitched in. Yes, that's right, yeah. Well, you wouldn't want a machine stitch it anyway. It would show through at the front, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, so I, I think I... The order is, I think... I'm trying to remember from the pattern now because it's a while since I made it. I think <laughs> I put the, the, hand, the handles in next. Yes, I do put the handles in next. So you just slip stitch through. And that is all... There's lots of photos about that, about how to um, yes. work up and down the holes to get them attached properly. Yeah, yeah loads okay. of photos. And no, then that's that really last good. photo on that last page shows you how to um, turn... Um. You oh, just yeah. turn this bit you over. You can't really, you wouldn't know they're there. It's no. only because you've said, and I can feel those points. Turn that bit over and turn the lining over. So when you attach the lining, there's a note to say to leave a little bit unattached. Right? Ah, okay. Yeah, so that you can tuck that in, tuck the lining in, and then it folds nicely. But it might be better to, if you show that photo at the end there, yeah. looking down into the... Um, there you go. Yeah, that so, makes sense. Yeah. So, because you, and you can't, you, I know they're there now because I can yeah. feel them, but you can't tell that they're there. No. So those pointy bits just go in. Go so obviously it was fabric, the you'd cut them off. Yeah. And that's when, if you wanted to, you could attach a handle in, inside there. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And how do you make long the handle. handle? Just a long chain. Oh, a okay. tight, long chain. Yeah. So on the ombre bag, you've used two colours. I've so used you, two colours. Would you do yeah. that with this one? You could do, you, you might need a, yeah, you could do, actually, but you might struggle with the 3.5, because this is thicker yarn on, on, on this bag. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is it's almost like an Aran weight cotton. But it's a three, three and a half again, though. Yeah, that's to pull it in tight. Remember, that's, du yeah, that's double, oh, yeah, that's, actually, that's a very good point. My math isn't working very well. You've, no, you've got two... Smaller yarns making the handle on that one on a 3.5. Right. Here we've got one thicker yarn. Oh, uh, okay. So you would only just 5. use one. Yeah, I would use one. I think we got there in the end. <laughs> yeah, but you've got two kits using two different yarns and two different uh, handles. Yeah, yeah. You're never going to remember that. Anyway, look, it doesn't matter because <laughs> it's in the instructions anyway. So if you were going so to do the handle, you sew that. Make it just pop it in that. Pop it in that hole there between the actual fabric and the lining before you s close that up with a sewing and uh, Bob's your uncle. Um, and I want to ask you about weaving in ends as well. That's something right. I ask everyone because I never can work out the right way to do it. And it's a question that we have well, a lot of, it's something mm, we have a lot of questions about. Okay. Well, with this, mm, okay. With this one, you're weaving in all your ends. Um, all the ends that you've had from crochet you're weaving in. Now, I, I, I tend to go along. Let's get a bit of crochet. Yeah, here. I mean, for this one, but also for other things, I think it's something that people really struggle with. Well, I always go under a stitch, under a few stitches as you go along, and then, I haven't got a needle, and then, <laughs> so under that stitch, under that stitch. Can you see that there? Yeah. And then... If I think it's going to be a bit slippy, I would go back round and under that stitch again, and then under a few more. So that gives it an extra, do you see what I mean? It's yeah, like so you go little, along, do go like along a little a bit, back. And then do a little back and, and then So you on. don't go along and back again then? Well, I do in knitting. I don't tend to in crochet. Why is that? I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I don't know. I don't really know. I think it's because crochet rows are more open, so you've got more chance. If you're going backwards, you've got more chance of seeing it, maybe. But Yeah. There is no right and wrong way. Well, there is, obviously, better ways than others. but Yeah, but I, everyone seems to have a different way, and they I never do, really know yeah. what is the right way. And have, when If I was doing much. it along a knitting row, I would yeah. go along one and turn and go back. But with crochet? But crochet, I don't. I tend to prefer to go carry on along as far as I think I need to go, but, but with a little, little back catch. stitch. Oh, yeah. that's a really good a idea. Back stitch. 
Is yeah. that because you might see it more? Because when I, I struggle a bit with it, adds, I always find it adds a bit of bulk. It, it can do, yeah. Um, I'm just always a little bit conscious of it coming out. So that's why I like to do an extra little um, back stitch on there. But especially with cotton, cotton can be slippy. Although this cotton is, is sort of shaped. It's like, a, what do they call that construction? Like chainette type oh, thing. Oh, I know what do you, you mean. Know what I mean. Yes, it's very different, isn't it? So Whereas the, um, however you say it, skippies. Skippies, yeah. yeah. is twisted. Yeah. This, um, it's almost like a it is like a chain construction. Yeah. So it's a bit more. It's a bit firmer, I think. Yeah. Whereas yeah. that will unravel. But the good, more. the good thing about the smaller ones is because you've used two together, you can split them up and and weave them in individually. Yeah, that's true. To stop the bulk. So, um, so that's the best way to to deal with those, I think. Isn't it odd, isn't it, how they are all differently woven as yeah. well? Yeah. Yeah, because that is like. But a I do. I love this yarn. Um, this is Lion Brand yarn, and it's just so, so beautiful, <laughs> and it's really, really good for bags. I use it a lot for bags. Well, it's mercerized, isn't it? So yeah, you get that nice little, nice little that sheen, that nice on little it. sheen to it. Yeah, it's lovely. Oh. So I hope you enjoyed your a bit of origami. I did. Today. Yes, that's great. <laughs> and actually, it'd be easier with. Um, crochet yes it would i should have done another long one but i ran out of so time. without triangle handles you wouldn't be able to make this would you uh I no don't know how you would do it well you could make it i tell you what people do because mm. i've seen that sort of construction done a lot and this is let me just go back to it a minute because this is what i would i've seen without the folding over at the top what a lot of people would do is they've made a shape like this mm. and then they do a quite substantial crochet handle that they that they make to go around there and then just sew it inside the top of that tip oh okay so there's a lot of bags if you if you have a look on online you'll find there's a <coughs> lot of bags that look like this shape and they've got a long handle like that at the tips oh, okay. okay but i wanted something i wanted to back Oh, well, also, I would worry that that's quite a big fee then for everything to fall out it, of. Yes, it is quite big <laughs> with the points on it. Whereas with the handle, yeah. it's not going to. Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. That's quite a good idea, yeah. though, isn't it? Yeah. So this technique is used, you know, a lot in patterns. I've seen lots of them. Um, <clears throat> I haven't. I think you can claim it as yours. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't seen it done like that. But we've never seen it with wooden handles because these are 100% And the points folded in. So. Um, Carol's own wooden handles, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so so um, I'm one. just going to go back through the kits again. Should we do the, we'll do this one, the triangle bag. Right, starting with the grey and white, which is the one I have here. Let me just get the right bit. So in the kit, you get um, two balls of yarn and it's a 100% cotton Aran weight yarn. Lovely. You've got a really deep charcoal and bright white. They look really lovely together, don't they? Um, you get the lining fabric, which is, 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 do they all have the same print? No, they're varied, but they all, they're they always a, a They're matching, all black and white. Matching so you get a, enough yeah. cotton fabric to line it anyway. Yeah. You get the triangle handles, two of, with pre-drilled holes in a very smooth wood. Yeah. This must have taken ages to sand. I keep thinking about the fact yeah. that he's, he's I think made he's these wished themselves. I'd never asked him, but there you go. Yeah. <laughs> he won't now. be going into mass production then. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so, but hey, who knows? I know, but they're like, they are like factory produced because they are so smooth. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're really good. Handmade by Carol's partner. Yeah. Um, and the full instruction, so everything you need to know, with great pictures too, which is really useful, isn't it? And as we were talking earlier, if you've not used charts in crochet, this is a really good opportunity because it's quite a simple chart. It's only yep. got two symbols. When you look at some charts, particularly like lace ones, you know they're great yep. big circles and they've got all sorts of symbols. But yeah, um, yeah, it's a good way to to get to know how to follow a chart, definitely. Yeah. Sort of, it, it makes it seem a bit simpler as well, doesn't it? Because you think, oh, okay. Well, if you're a visual person, then it's going to jump out at you. Oh, yeah, that's what it's got to look like at the end, you know? So, because when um, it says one DC, one H tree, people yeah. go, Whoa. What, yeah, you can't but see what it looks like, can you? From that, yeah, but so. where is this one that looks like what are all those little people? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> standing on their heads. Um, <laughs> 
That's, and it all comes in a bag. Now, the only thing that you will need with this is a three and a half mil crochet hook. So if you don't have one already, we have got them. If you just scroll down on the website, we've got three and a half mils. There's a clover one, only because I like the clover ones because I quite like the handles. So yeah, that's why we've I, got I, these. I do have to have ones with a handle. I've got these these, these ones. But we I've do do the zing ones as well, which are quite nice. I like them because they're a nice I, colour. I don't like the plain metal ones. I, I struggle with those. With I like the, the handle on these. Yeah. Yeah. And you can chew the end when you're concentrating. <laughs> <laughs> I do quite a lot. Might have all got little teeth. Uh, um, the oh, other colour. just me. Oh no! But I'm because I'm really thinking. Of <laughs> uh, the other colourway, which is the most popular, Hannah, teal and cream is the oh, most popular. Oh, that's interesting. Mm. Yeah, you see, now we always say that the um, whatever we've worked the sample in is the most popular. <laughs> Completely blown that one. Uh, yeah, it's the opposite today. Which doesn't work at all. <laughs> so the teal and cream is the most popular. Um, you get 100 grams of teal and 100 grams of cream. It's an arum weight, 100% cotton yarn. You get the two handles with the pre-drilled holes, which are extremely smooth. And you can't buy anywhere else. <laughs> and um, a tealy coloured matching line, cotton lining and full instructions. So that's everything you need for the triangle bag kit. And if you want to buy the, um, the ombre kit, for the golden ombre, which is this bag here, fully lined with magnetic clasp, optional shoulder strap, which you can put inside so you can choose because it does actually, and I suppose that would work with the other one as well. Yeah, you can tuck it right inside. So you can just tuck it right inside. You know, that's why I wanted thin ones so that. Yeah, so it's not yeah. in the way. Yeah. Yeah. And if you were a super so you could put a little pocket in Ooh, to put yes. it in. <laughs> Put your hand I have in. enough of a challenge putting lining in now. Come on. <laughs> well, mm. but then you know it's the same the other way around. So <laughs> you, in the kit you get wooden handles with a special slot, specially designed. I told you the whole thing was the two have been designed together. The bag fits the handles, and the handles fits the bag. Um, you get the plastic canvas which gives the bag its structure, which I think is quite important. It's that sort of structured bag. All the cotton yarn, one, two, three, four, five colours of cotton yarn, but in lovely graduating shades, because that's the only way that you achieve this ombre effect, mm -hmm. by mixing them together. Um, you get the magnetic clasp and stitch markers, which are very important, otherwise you won't get your handle flap. Is it called a handle flap? Um, yeah, it is a flap, yeah. The handle flap. Mm. <coughs> Or casing, or I don't know. Um, can't what and I the lining it. fabric as well. Yeah. And obviously, full instructions. That all comes together. Um, then finally, the um, blue. Is this one just called blues? Yeah. Blues. <laughs> just making sure. Blues ombre. So again, you get the handles with the special groove. You get six colours of cotton yarn. Five colours. Five colours. Can't even add up now. One, two, three, four, five colours of cotton yarn all ranging through the blue. So you get a really lovely sort of sea blue effect. Blue fabric to line it. The um, plastic canvas and the little blue bag with the magnetic clasp and the stitch markers and full instructions. And that makes the blue version of this. Right, so the blue one is our most popular. In both bags, actually. Mm. There we go. Who, would, who knew? So you do need to check out if you want it or if you've got it in your basket, remember to check out because what we find is that people will put it in their basket and then they watch the demonstration and then they check out and then you miss it. Um, so we had a message from somebody asking, Julie says, what size are the bags? Okay, well, it's if we have if you have a look in the pattern, it will tell you right. each one. So says. the ombre bag is 22 centimetres wide and 17 centimetre high. That's eight and three quarter inches wide and six, six and a half high. The triangle bag is um, 26 centimetres wide and 22 centimetres tall or 10 and a quarter inches wide and eight and a half inches tall. I hope that helps. Right, well, thank you so much for joining us today on Yarn Lane. I think that's been great. Lovely to see Carol's own designs and how she's put all this together and obviously her teaching is always brilliant but it was just really nice to have a chat about different techniques and find out from her because she really is an expert about how she does things so thank you for joining us on yarn lane we will be back on wednesday 
while we've got Sam back, Adventures in Crafting. She's doing crochet flowers. Oh. Crochet flowers, all sorts of bouquets of crochet flowers, daffodils and irises and daisies and tulips and mixed bouquets and all sorts. And we will be back on Friday and Sunday as normal this week. So, <coughs> oh. God, yeah, sorry, I think I breathed the wrong way. <laughs> really very emotional, <laughs> wasn't I? Just breathed the wrong way. <laughs> Um, so thanks for joining us and we will see you bright and early tomorrow morning on Sewing Street at 8 o'clock and back on Yarn Lane with you at 12 o'clock on Wednesday. Bye!